Greetings from the United States, and welcome back to the Nostalgia Channel. Over the past few days, we've received somber news about the loss of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is devoted to honoring their memory. Additionally, we'll recap the stars whom we've recently bid farewell to. Before we dive in, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving it a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Jeannie Epper, the renowned stunt double who fearlessly performed daring feats for Linda Carter in the original Wonder Woman TV series, passed away at the age of 83. She peacefully departed in her home in Simi Valley, California, surrounded by her loving family. Born in 1941 into a family of professional stunt performers, her father, John Epper, a former member of the Swiss Cavalry turned respected stuntman in Western films, instilled in her the art of stunt work from a young age. Despite the challenges of a male-dominated industry, Jeannie broke barriers in the 1970s, paving the way for women in stunt work. Throughout her illustrious career, she doubled for Linda Carter on Wonder Woman from 1975 to 1979, and for Kate Jackson on Charlie's Angels in 1976. Her remarkable performances extended to films like Romancing the Stone, for which she earned the prestigious Stuntman Award in 1984. With over 150 feature films and television series to her credit, including iconic titles like Catch Me If You Can, The Amazing Spider-Man, and Kill Bill Valder II, Jeannie left an indelible mark on the industry. Not only a trailblazer in stunt work, but Jeannie was also recognized as a founding member of the Stunt Women's Association of Motion Pictures in 1968, later serving as its president in 1999. Her groundbreaking contributions were honored with numerous accolades, including the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Taurus World Stunt Awards in 2007, making her the first woman to receive such recognition. Jeannie's legacy lives on through her children, Urine, Richard, and Curtis, who have all followed in her footsteps as stunt performers. Her passion, courage, and dedication have left an enduring mark, solidifying her as a pioneer and legend in the world of stunt performance. Bernard Hill, an acclaimed English actor, passed away on May 5th at the age of 79. Born in Blackley, Manchester, Hill rose from humble beginnings in a Catholic family of minors to become a celebrated figure in both film and television. He was renowned for his compelling portrayal of Theoden, King of Rohan, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and as Captain Edward Smith in James Cameron's Titanic. Hill's role as Yasser Hughes in Alan Bleasdale's Boys from the Black Stuff became iconic, emblematic of the social and economic struggles in Thatcher-era Britain. His character's desperate plea, Giz a Job, resonated deeply, becoming a cultural touchstone. Hill's acting career was marked by its diversity. He portrayed characters ranging from a Liverpool housewife's husband in Shirley Valentine to a sergeant in Gandhi and later roles in major Hollywood films like The Scorpion King. His portrayal of historical figures such as the Duke of Norfolk in Wolf Hall showcased his versatility and depth as an actor. His performance in Paranorman and involvement in projects like North v South displayed his willingness to explore various genres and mediums, including voice acting. Off-screen, Hill was a dedicated family man and a passionate fan of Manchester United, his contributions to the arts were recognized with an honorary degree from the University of East Anglia in 2019, celebrating a lifetime of achievement in drama. Bernard Hill's legacy is not just in the powerful characters he brought to life, but also in his influence on aspiring actors and filmmakers. He will be remembered as a pivotal figure in British cinema, whose performances enriched the lives of audiences around the world. 
His passing is a profound loss to the arts community, but his work continues to inspire and entertain. Kristen Halenga, a beacon of hope and resilience, passed away at the age of 38 due to complications from her long battle with breast cancer. A British columnist and philanthropist, Kristen's indomitable spirit was best exemplified by her founding of Kappa Feel, a charity dedicated to educating young people about the importance of early cancer detection. Born on November 11, 1985, Kristen was diagnosed with terminal breast cancer at the young age of 23, after her concerns were initially dismissed by health professionals. This misdiagnosis fueled her commitment to ensuring that no other young person would face the same oversight. Her story and her fight against breast cancer were poignantly chronicled in the powerful documentary, Chris, Dying to Live, which garnered significant public attention and support for her cause. Kristen's work and unwavering advocacy earned her a well-deserved Pride of Britain Award in 2009. Her charisma and story resonated on various platforms, including an impactful appearance on Russell Howard's Good News and through her Sunday Times best-selling memoir, Glittering a Turd. Despite the progression of her cancer to her liver, bones, and even a lesion on her brain, Kristen's condition stabilized in 2018, demonstrating her remarkable strength and the advances in cancer treatment that she championed. She lived significantly beyond her initial prognosis, dedicating herself to her advocacy and spreading her message of hope and early action. Kristen's legacy is not just in the lives she touched through her public appearances and writing, but also in the vital work that Kappa Feel continues to do in educating young people about breast cancer. Her life serves as a powerful reminder of the impact one individual can have on the world, transforming personal tragedy into a lasting beacon of hope and change. Richard Tandy, the esteemed keyboardist of Electric Light Orchestra, passed away at the age of 76. A pivotal figure in the rock and roll scene, Tandy's virtuosic keyboard playing helped define the distinctive sound of ELO, a band that masterfully blended rock with orchestral arrangements. His contribution to music was immortalized with his induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2017, a testament to his impact on the industry. Jeff Lynne, the founder of ELO, expressed his sorrow on social media, remembering Tandy not just as an exceptional musician, but as a cherished friend. Their collaboration spanned decades, producing some of the most iconic tracks in rock history, including hits like Evil Woman and Mr. Blue Sky. Tandy's musicianship was not only pivotal in the studio, but also electrified live performances notably reuniting with Lynn for Jeff Lynn's ELO in 2014 and performing at the 57th Grammy Awards alongside Ed Sheeran. Tandy's legacy is marked by his technical prowess and innovative play, which continued to resonate with audiences around the world, influencing generations of musicians. His journey with ELO saw them create a sound that was both ahead of its time and timeless culminating in a celebratory 50th anniversary just before their final tour announcement. The music world mourns the loss of Richard Tandy, a true pioneer whose melodies and chords enriched the tapestry of rock music. His artistry will continue to inspire and entertain, ensuring that his influence will be felt for generations to come. Géraldine Carré, a distinguished French journalist, broadcaster, and actress, passed away on May 3rd at the age of 54, leaving behind a legacy of dynamic and influential media presence. Born on September 15, 1969, in Lyon, Carré's career spanned over three decades, during which she became a celebrated figure in both radio and television. 
Starting her journey in radio in 1990 at Europe 2, Carré quickly established herself as a vibrant voice that resonated with many. Her transition to television began in 1994, where she continued to capture audiences with her charismatic hosting and insightful commentary, notably on TF1's Confessions in Times, a role that made her a household name. Beyond her on-screen achievements, Carré was a voice for many documentaries and advertising campaigns, bringing a unique blend of warmth and clarity to her performances. Her work extended into community and cultural engagement, notably through her role with the Friends of the Petit Palais, where she organized support dinners and artistic events, showcasing her passion for fostering artistic expression. Carré's life was not just about her public persona. She was a mother of four and a wife, roles that she cherished deeply. Her book on motherhood, co-authored with journalist Alex Giro Delan, reflects her personal experiences and the joy she found in family life. Her untimely death following a car crash has left a void in the French media landscape. Remembered not only for her contributions to broadcasting, but also for her vibrant spirit that brought light and energy to every project she touched, Geraldine Carré's legacy will undoubtedly endure through the countless lives she touched, both directly and through the waves and screens across which her voice traveled. Marla Adams, a cherished icon of American television, passed away at the age of 85 on April 25th in Los Angeles. Best known for her riveting performances in daytime television, Adams's career spanned decades, enriching the soap opera genre with her compelling portrayals. Born in Ocean City, New Jersey, on August 28, 1938, Adams began her acting journey on the stage before gracing the screen. She made her mark in the Broadway production of The Visit in 1958, and soon transitioned to film, appearing alongside Natalie Wood in Splendor in the Grass. Her versatility shone through in various roles across film and television, including memorable parts in Special Delivery and Gotcha. However, it was her work in soap operas that truly defined her legacy. From 1968 to 1974, Adams captivated audiences as Belle Clemens on The Secret Storm, embodying the show's formidable villainess. She later enchanted viewers of The Young and the Restless as Dina Abbott Mergeron, a role she played intermittently from 1983, earning critical acclaim and an Emmy Award for her portrayal of a character grappling with Alzheimer's disease. Adams's talent also brought her to other notable soap operas, including Capital, Generations, and The Bold and the Beautiful, showcasing her ability to delve into complex characters and dramatic storylines. Beyond daytime TV, Adams appeared in over 40 primetime shows, leaving a mark with her guest roles in series such as Star Sky and Hutch, Happy Days, and Walker, Texas Ranger. Remembered not only for her dramatic flair, but also for her warmth and professionalism, Marla Adams's contributions to television drama have left an indelible impact. Her legacy will continue to inspire future generations of actors and entertainers. Mike Pinder, a pivotal figure in rock music and a founding member of the Moody Blues, passed away peacefully at his home in Northern California on April 24th at the age of 82. Pinder's battle with dementia in his later years marked the poignant conclusion of a groundbreaking journey that deeply resonated with fans and forever altered the contours of rock music. Born on December 27, 1941, in Erdington, Birmingham, Pinder was a trailblazer in the truest sense. His early work with the Moody Blues played an instrumental role in shaping the sound of the 1960s and beyond, thanks in large part to his pioneering use of the Mellotron. This instrument became a hallmark of the Moody Blues sound, imbuing their music with lush orchestral textures that became synonymous with the band's identity. 
Yet, Pinder's musical genius extended beyond his instrumental innovation. His profound lyrical contributions left an indelible mark on the genre. Songs like Dawn is a Feeling and Melancholy Man stand as testaments to his introspective and philosophical songwriting. His voice, both literal and literary, helped solidify the moody blues as icons of the progressive rock genre. Beyond his musical accomplishments, Pinder served as a mentor and influencer to many. His introduction of the Mellotron to the Beatles stands as just one example of his far-reaching impact on the music industry. His commitment to pushing the boundaries of rock music earned him and his band a well-deserved induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2018. Even in retirement, Pinder continued to exert his influence on music, supporting new artists and enjoying a family life steeped in musical tradition as his children followed in his artistic footsteps. The legacy of Mike Pinder transcends mere records and instruments. It lies in the inspiration he provided to generations of musicians and fans alike. His contributions will continue to resonate, serving as a reminder of a man who truly listened to the music of the spheres and encouraged others to do the same. Ewan McIntosh, the beloved British actor renowned for his portrayal of the deadpan accountant Keith Bishop in the iconic series The Office, passed away at the age of 50. His final years were marked by a battle with ill health, culminating in his peaceful passing in a care home in Darlington. Born on Christmas Day in 1973 in Maranthshire, Wales, McIntosh's early life was steeped in the rich cultural backdrop of his homeland. He attended Repton School before pursuing linguistics at the University of Edinburgh, where he immersed himself deeply in the local theater scene. His comedic talent was honed with the Edinburgh University Theatre Company and the Improvers, setting the stage for his later success. Macintosh's breakthrough role in the office from 2001 to 2003 earned him widespread acclaim for his masterful comic timing and underplayed humor which became his signature style. Beyond the office, he enriched various other productions, including appearances on shows like Miranda and Little Britain, and films such as The Lobster and Finding Fatima. Throughout his career, Macintosh ventured beyond acting into music programming, where he presented shows on now 80s and now 90s, and even graced the stage in West End productions and national television adverts. His diverse talents showcased his versatility and enduring appeal. Macintosh's contribution to British comedy and his memorable role in The Office left an indelible mark on fans and colleagues alike. His wit, warmth, and the subtle intelligence of his performances will be fondly remembered by all who had the pleasure of experiencing his work. As the entertainment world mourns his loss, Macintosh's legacy as a cherished figure in British television and film endures. In today's breaking news, Bruce Springsteen, the iconic singer of Born in the USA, has recently made a triumphant return to the stage in Phoenix and Las Vegas after a hiatus in his tour due to health concerns. At the age of 74, Springsteen revealed that he had been battling peptic ulcer disease, which led to the postponement of the Springsteen and E Street Band Tour to 2024. This condition, characterized by painful sores in the stomach lining, severely affected his singing abilities, as he disclosed in an interview with Sirius XM's E Street Radio. Springsteen described the ailment as debilitating, confessing that it rendered him unable to sing for months and sparked worries about his future in music. I literally couldn't sing at all, he shared, highlighting the seriousness of his symptoms. Despite these challenges, reassurances from his medical team eventually restored his optimism. Now back on stage, Springsteen attributes his recovery to the expertise of his doctors expressing profound gratitude for their assistance in overcoming this painful chapter and allowing him to return to what he loves most. 
In News 2, Carol Klein, the beloved horticulturalist and presenter on BBC's Gardener's World, has bravely shared her recent journey with breast cancer and subsequent double mastectomy. The 75-year-old star took to Instagram to announce her diagnosis, expressing deep gratitude towards the medical staff at North Devon District Hospital for their exceptional care. In her heartfelt post, Klein detailed her experience from the initial referral to the breast care clinic to her ongoing recovery process at home, where she has been immersing herself in gardening and working on her upcoming book. She praised Dr. Anna Conway and the hospital staff for their efficiency and kindness, underscoring the excellence of the NHS. Despite the challenges, Klein remains optimistic and looks forward to returning to her beloved shows, including upcoming appearances at the Chelsea Flower Show and the Gardener's World Live Show in Birmingham. Her resilience and positive outlook continue to serve as an inspiration to her fans and viewers as she navigates this difficult phase of her life. As we close this episode dedicated to honoring the memories of those extraordinary talents we've recently lost, we're reminded of the profound impact they've had on our lives and the world of entertainment. Their contributions will forever be cherished and celebrated serving as timeless reminders of their lasting influence. Join us in paying tribute to these stars by continuing to preserve their legacies and sharing their art with future generations. Thank you for your support and for joining us on this journey of remembrance. Until next time, take care, and may their spirits continue to shine brightly in our hearts. Goodbye for now, from all of us here at the Nostalgia Channel.